Hi, Tzadik, how are you? Um, so, wasting seed, the uh, Shulchan Aruch calls the biggest sin in the Torah. So, uh, the uh, tshuva for wasting seed is not a simple one, but it's also not impossible for somebody that obviously desires to do tshuva. First and foremost, a person needs to educate themselves about the sin itself. They have to educate themselves and to understand why they have to do tshuva for it. They have to understand what's so bad about it, and they have to understand why they have to regret it. Um, and uh, so, first and foremost, they have to educate themselves. Well, Hashem, we have a whole playlist of uh, lectures about wasting seed. I'll send it to you shortly. Uh, some long lectures, just uh, three or four long lectures. I highly recommend watching every single one of them. Uh, you don't have to, you know, watch it all in one sitting. Watch uh, ten minutes at a time, an hour at a time, three hours at a time, whatever you want. But the point is to watch all of them. They're all different. They all cover different aspects of it. They cover the sin itself, and they also cover the next part, which is the chuva. So the second part of chuva, aside from the education, is to obviously stop. Stop the sin. Uh, a person needs to do everything in their, uh, possible to stop themselves from sinning, and there are different shitot, different strategies of how to stop it because it's not one of those sins like uh, Shabbat where you could just stop driving. Unfortunately, when a person uh, wastes seed for a long enough time, they um, get addicted to it physically uh, and psychologically. And the Rambam writes that it's the uh, most difficult addiction in human nature to overcome, even worse than drugs. So a person needs to do certain things in order to help themselves. I explained this in a shiurim, but just to give you a few, little bit of insights, one of the uh, uh, things that a person needs to do is, uh, if he's single, is that he's not allowed to touch his member. Uh, so that means that when he goes to the bathroom, he should go to the bathroom, uh, you know, if, it's, uh, if he has a urinal, then, you know, urinal, he doesn't touch his member. If he doesn't, then he has to sit down. Uh, when he takes a shower, to use a sponge to clean himself uh, and uh, not to touch it himself. The uh, Rambam says that if he's married, he's allowed to touch it, but uh, in general, it's still always not recommended. Uh, but if he's single, he's, there's no reason in the world for him to touch it. The Gemara says that the person that touches his member is bringing on a mabul. So it says heavy stuff about it. Uh, so wh why? Why is there such an extent? Because once a person touches himself, even for... for uh, uh, you know, just ordinary purposes like, uh, you know, relieving himself, that means he's very comfortable with his own body. And the more comfortable a person is with his own body, to touch his own body, even whether it's a, uh, the more comfortable he will be to do things like this. At least one thing leads to the other. So it's, a, it's not just a physical thing, it's also psychological. So a person needs to become, in essence, less comfortable with himself. Uh, do his best to not even look at that part of his body altogether, ever. Uh, and I know this sounds strange in the beginning and it's even a little difficult in the beginning, but you get used to it. There's all the shame. Um, the third thing is that I, uh, aside from obviously uh, learning and then stopping, and now he has to take certain actions. One of the actions that the uh, Arizal says that he has to fast 84 times for every time he wasted seed. Uh, now, of course, since most people in today's world cannot fast barely a handful of times, let alone 84 times, uh, if a person simply, you know, went through his teenage years, he simply would have to rest, you know, fast for the rest of his life. So the Chachamim say, so what do you do? In that situation, you use the uh, money in order to replace the fast, meaning that each fast is replaced by the value of a meal. So if, let's say, a meal is $5.00, each uh, fast is five dollars, so for each time a person uh, wasted seed in his life would be five dollars. So that's a uh, each wasting seed would be four hundred and twenty dollars. If he lives in a more expensive country uh, like Japan or other places, it may be more. You know, it could be ten dollars a meal. Point being is that let's say if it's five dollars a meal, it's four hundred twenty dollars per time. Now, if a person is rich, then he should. Uh, it's highly recommended for him to give a very large sum and rid himself of uh, at least a big part of what he did. If he's not rich, uh, or it's just too difficult for him for whatever reason, then he should just uh, make uh, regular small donations on a regular basis uh, to uh, for this specific reason itself. Uh, this is outside of Maser, this is outside of traditional tzedakah, this is something uh, specific tzedakah. 
uh, to give specifically for this. So if let's say he could afford to give four hundred and twenty dollars a month, then that's what he would do for the uh, for for the wasting seed, uh, and um, help himself dramatically. Now, of course, if he wasted seed many many times, this means that he's gonna have to give it for a long time. But that's okay. Like I told you guys in the story about the uh, toilet paper uh, business story on uh, on Sunday, Hashem is simply looking for us to take real action uh, to try to do full tshuva. Once we do it, He'll help us. Meaning, If a person comes to become purified, Hashem will help him. Even giving him more money in order to help him do tshuva, if that's necessary. So uh, He has to give staka. Now the next part is uh, to uh, erase the sin, is to uh, learn, learn Torah, specifically learn Gemara to the point of sweating, meaning learn hard, learn you know, uh, consecutive, you know, several hours in a row, uh, to the point where you're even sweating and it's difficult for you. Darizal says that uh, that sweat is destroying that sin. And then the last and most important part is to get other people to stop. Every time you get another person to stop, it wipes off the sins. Each time he, he would have done it, it wipes off one of the sins that you did it or somebody else did it. And it's one of the, uh, it's the most extraordinary part of the tshuva. And that's why I always recommend for people that are going to take this tshuva seriously for wasting seed to use that $420 or whatever money that they're giving for the purpose of publicizing specific teachings and specific organizations that teach about this sin and not just general stuff not to give that four hundred dollars to your local shul even though the shul may be a very nice shul very good uh, good place uh, or the yeshiva maybe uh have some real tamide chachamim that are fantastic people it's not going to help you as much as giving it to someone that's teaching or organization that focuses on wasting seed simply because it'll help you with the torah aspect of it but not with the kiruv aspect of it it's not going to help you get to people that's that are stopping it so when you're giving that money to uh, whether it's our organization or anybody else that teaches this uh, this uh, this specific issue, and there's a few in the Hebrew language, uh, uh, at least a handful of uh, rabbis that teach it. In English, it's almost non-existent. Uh, Rav Mizrahi teaches it a little bit about it. Uh, Rav Zitron has taught about it a little bit, and uh, that's almost it. That's almost it. Other organizations say that they try to help people with it, but they don't teach anything about it. Uh, Hashem, we've become the, uh, it's sad, but it's in reality, we've become the industry leader in English language about teaching about wasting seed. I say it's sad, even though it's a big schut, it's sad because there's so many bigger organizations that could do so much more with their capital and teach so many more people that they should do it, but unfortunately, they don't. So anyway, this, uh, in the last five years or so, we've uh, reached countless people from all over the world and helped them with this specific issue. So when people probably, you know, donate to this, you know, so we can give CDs uh, that uh, talk about it, like our Wall Street from uh, Wall Street to Western Wall number two, that CD has a couple of major of our most popular lectures about this topic. Also, our Musar series has a couple of lectures about it. Anyway, when somebody does this, they're helping themselves twofold. Number one, they're helping themselves with the Kiruv aspect of it, and they're helping themselves with the Tzedakah aspect of it. And that's a very, very big mala. Uh, so the combination of the, these handful of things are the core foundation of doing tshuva for wasting seed. But always remember that the learning is not just a one-time learning, it's an ongoing learning. Meaning you constantly have to learn about this on a regular basis. If it's not daily, at least has to, it should be weekly. If it's not weekly, definitely no less than monthly to learn and refresh yourself about this sin. On a regular basis, a person needs to know a lot about it in order to, you know, constantly remind himself when the Yitzhah comes and tries to convince him to do this. He has to uh, do everything possible to uh, to stop himself, and knowledge is going to help him. But more importantly, he has to uh, eventually know that he has to going to have to educate his kids and uh, his peers to get them to stop, because that's also going to help his eternity as well. So I'll send you uh, now the uh, one lecture to start with, and then after that, the playlist that, uh, again, may seem uh, uh, you know overwhelming because it's a lot of hours and a lot of this, but trust me when I tell you, once you get into it, just like the shiurim, it uh, goes like a breeze, and uh, you learn a lot from it, and each shiur, Baruch Hashem, is very different from the other, uh, different uh, proofs, different sources, and uh, a lot of interesting points. Ashrecha v'ashrecha kecha, 
that uh, you're in the process of doing tshuva for the biggest sin in the Torah, and as other Hashem, this will bring a lot of kedusha to your life and uh, make you a lot stronger in every aspect of your life, most importantly in your avodat Hashem.